Egogun, be careful. Egogun is a Yoruba word, um, or you both call it masquerade. They are supposedly spirits of the dead visiting the living. Since they are supposed to be spirits, Egoguns wear a regalia. Yorubas call it Eku. That shrouds the identity of the wearer. The Egungu is accompanied by a guide called the Atokun. And among other things, it is the role of the Atokun to ensure that the Egungu, having covered its eyes, does not fall into a ditch or any other accident situation. This informed the message of Egungu Be Careful, in which an Egungu was dancing onto the expressway. And the Atokun had to send out the warning. Egungu, be careful. Now express with the go. So, of course, Egungu is not a spirit after all, but a human being in the regalia. If he enters the expressway without looking out for vehicles, he will be dead meat. So when some associations chose to block foodstuff from crossing over to the south because the federal government did not pay them compensation for losses incurred during the NSAS protest, the Egungu be careful message becomes instructive. Because in the real sense, the Egungu was dancing onto the expressway in full regalia. First, NSAS losses did not have ethnic coloration. And there is absolutely no basis for a section of the society to think that the federal government should selectively pay them compensation. If anything, don't they know where the seat of the federal government is to go and make their demands? Secondly, who truly do these associations represent? Is it the northern farmer who has a truckload of tomato or pepper to sell? Certainly not. Someone said, but they threatened to take these items to Cameroon and other neighboring countries to sell. Yes, that is possible, but it is still illogical. When a Cameroon market that used to receive one truckload of tomatoes daily suddenly receives four, what will happen to the price? So the idea of taking those produce to create glots in neighboring countries also doesn't add up. Now wash. Another person said, oh, they just want to punish the South. But hey, a whole lot of Northerners here in the South are involved in the retail business of food items. So when you cut off supply, you not only punish Southerners, you're also punishing millions of Northerners whose livelihood depend on retailing those food items. That is to say, even this punishing South story does not make sense. It doesn't make sense that a Nigerian farmer or trader will choose to exclude itself from Lagos, the largest market with the highest effective demand in the entire sub-region, and then head for the desert to sell its produce because he feels that some people sitting in Abuja were winning. It defies logic. Dear associations, your economics must be very poor. And obviously, you are neither representing the farmer nor the traders. You are mere rent seekers. If this blockade lingers and the South chooses to replace you as a supply source, you may never recover that market. Remember, there is land, there is water, there is sunshine in the South. So let your egungu be careful because na express you they go so. From the perspective of a hard-working northern farmer, or the trader who has bought truck loads of foodstuff, the blockade doesn't make sense. So we must ask those associations in whose interest. I'll give you my thoughts. It is politicians and their greedy rent seeker friends that are playing games. And it was a dangerous game. However, as the truck was approaching this Egungu at high speed, somehow, he heard the Atokun's voice and scampered off the expressway. Else, the consequences might have been well above what the little minds of the schemers could have contemplated. I hope the lessons of this event were taken. Ah, well taken, sir. Are you when sure? The, ah, well taken, no, bros. No. When the tomatoes no. that you used to sell no. for 12,000 naira no. went to 2,000 naira, no Those one was still buying. Those are not the lessons for me. I must say, those are not the lessons. The lessons have not been taken. The lessons are, you know, when you sit down up north and think that um, you don't need the south, or that you sit down in the south and think you don't need the north. Now, with this, 
the lesson is that we need each other. True. And, and so this idea of we are better off than these other people, we should drop it. You decide not to sell to the South. And then also, let's not even deceive ourselves. With this, it is obvious that the North need the South even much more than the South need the North. I agree. That we can't hide it away from. I agree. Yes, the South is a supply market. The, like you said, if they decide to replace you, those Cameroon that you take your tomatoes to, some of them were complaining that they got there, they already had these stuffs. And, and so at the end of the day, some of them even ended up giving them away. Yes, I yes. heard they so gave them away. So some traders had to use flight to ferry their goods to the south because they were not part of all of this. Yeah. Now they have graduated, they have called it off, yes. called it. pretending to hold, hold a meeting. Like you said, it is the politicians. And I look at, I saw Yaya Bello, yeah, I don't no, want to call him another name, and Fanny Kayode, pretending to <laughs> broke up peace, and I look at these clouds. Peace between who and who now? Which yeah. the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the headers, the tomato sellers, and the presidency. It's, it's <laughs> crazy. I, I think for me, um, the lesson, or the sad part of this, is just the narrative that we've gotten to the point where, over the last four to five years, we've seen the schism, the, 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 the divide, within Nigeria has grown. And you were talking within your piece of north, south. I mean, as I, was, as I said during the, before we got on, I grew up in the barracks. There's no north, north south. south, you know. Um, and I, I, I went to command school, you know. There's, it's only in the last couple of years we're beginning to see that divide, you widen. know, grow, widen, and become the edges. It's yeah. not just that they, 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 they've grown apart, but they've become sharp. And very sharp. And that's the problem where we have this narrative of north, south. But like Libero said, clearly we, we, we need each other. Um, mm -hmm. both, you know. But I, I think the sum of it for me is that it shows that we're a country of two parts. Obviously. And we're a country of two, two parts at least. And we need to sit down again to, yeah. to have a conversation well, about yeah. how we, we, want, to, we yeah. want to come together true, true. and not just this force thing where we buy military fiat by decrees and by constitution true. which was foisted on us by them and say this is how we you know you hear people politicians and government people say um it, 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 nothing is non-negotiable in nigeria i mean <laughs> even Chuga. in the uk had they had referendums yes. and they yeah. had all kinds of things you can't Chuga. say that Oh, someone said that the UK that even amalgamated us, <laughs> they have now Brexited. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Chuka. I think that um, the, 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 the north-south divide in Nigeria is, is really not a new thing. Because if I think back to when we were in secondary school, we were in Federal Government College Warri, which was the unity school. Truth is that I remember very carefully that during the elections for the vice Secretary of our union, of, of the Students' Council, the winner almost always tended to be from the North because the Northern students voted on mass for the Northern candidate. And it was the only way a Southern boy could win that vice secretary was if he was able to key into the Northern votes or there was no Northerner that year willing to come forward to compete. I remember it very, very clearly. And, mean, and meanwhile, when it, it didn't work the other way around because when a very brilliant chap called Ibrahim Hadou, Hadou went for it, out of 1,000 votes, he got 900 and something because everybody voted for Bradu, for Ibrahim Hadou. Because he was and brilliant. So it, it, the South have been slow in being sectional, basically is what I'm saying. Mm. And the, you know, the North, it's like they teach them from a young age sectionalism hmm. that's the problem that's a problem we have yeah well liberos is next after the break as it points out the importance of good governance <laughs> 